All right, so here's here's an overview of uh, what we were just talking about, but I wanna I wanna go back to kind of the beginning of this. Um, so essentially, the, uh, the 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 human brain was designed to really do two things: find ways to survive and subsequently thrive and conserve calories. So whatever you're doing, and, and, and one of the reasons I wanted to show this was really this, this next one. So whenever somebody comes across a marketing message that anybody has, uh, you are automatically putting their brain on a treadmill. And the clarity uh, of putting their brain of, uh, of the treadmill decides if that, that treadmill is gonna be at one or if it's gonna be at 10. Um, and what, uh, what story does is really helps us clarify uh, very simply so that, so that it's not quite as, as heavy of a lift uh, or you don't have to run quite so fast and spend so many calories understanding what's going on. Uh, so every idea that, that you introduce into a story, uh, you got to think about that like a bowling ball. And one bowling ball's no problem. One idea is no problem. People can manage one idea. You start getting two, it starts getting a little bit more precarious, three, and pretty soon you're going to have them uh, falling on the ground. They're not, not going to remember anything. And uh, typically marketing messages, particularly websites, have tons of different ideas that, that they're trying to work through. And ultimately that falls flat because nobody can juggle that much information. So we utilize story as the, the sense-making device. And here's just, just that same flow that, that Andy was going over. So, so the character uh, really, and, and, and kind of let's stay here on, on the first three of these. So the character, the problem, and the guide. That is the majority of what the marketing message needs to be about. Uh, because the, so the character, the other term for that is the hero. So if, if the hero of the story is your potential customer and you are clearly identifying, identifying and talking about their problem on a consistent basis, that, uh, that story is going to resonate with them. Because if you're not talking about the problem and typically in, in manufacturing and a lot of other industries, it, it generally, uh, starts with talking about the company and what you you do really well. And whenever that happens, there's a disassociation that happens because the story's not about them, that it's about you. And the, uh, the, the guide principle is really helping the, uh, helping the hero clearly identify the problem that they have and that they, uh, they can see very clearly evidenced in their lives and bringing them to a solution by giving them a plan. So, so I, I think that's a really important portion of this is, is, you know, when you look at your website, when you look at your marketing messages, your emails, whatever it is, does it start with that basic premise? You are talking, uh, you are talking to the hero of the story about a problem that is clear to them. And Andy, uh, I just wanna kick that back just in terms of that idea uh, to dig into a little bit, bit more. What, uh, any other thoughts about identifying the hero and clearly uh, siding as the guide, being the, 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 the manufacturing company being the guide? Yeah, so when we first, um... When I first learned about the framework and, and looking at this, you know, and I went to our website and it, and it was essentially an online brochure that was all about us, right? It's, it's who we are, what we do, how we do it. And, you know, it, it was the quintessential, you know, if you looked at Bowden's website and you said, all right, who's the hero of the story? Question, the answer to the question was Bowden's the hero of the story. And that, you know, that opportunity to try and shift our design where we can be the guide and that our customers that hear of a story uh, that they want to engage 
uh, in the material that we're providing them that, that can let them know that we're there to help them solve that problem. And, and so the challenge is, is, is how can we communicate extremely clearly on who is the customer, who is that hero uh, that we're, we're speaking to and what is the nature of a problem uh, that, that they have that we solve. Um, and you know, making that shift, and it's it's one that uh, you know it seems that when when and maybe it's the same for you guys, and I'd be interested to hear you guys chime in on it. Uh, you know, it's not a trivial thing. So we have some small customers that you know we deal directly with the owner of that manufacturing company. There's somewhere we're dealing with General Dynamics, so we got five different buyers, and they're radically different from each other even. And so trying to uh, get a sense of all right, where should we target that message and how is it going to resonate as clearly as possible? Because I do believe, in, and I know it's one of the store brand things is if you confuse, you're going to lose and, and making sure that it's extremely clear uh, so that it'll speak to them because we're all being bombarded by ridiculous amounts of marketing messages. Um, so let me pause there. And uh, since I don't want it to just be Dave, if you want to stop sharing your screen for a yep. second. Um, so uh, I know John read the book. I, it didn't look like anybody else necessarily had it. Have you read the book, Chip? Have you read Building a Story Brand or heard about it before? No, I haven't. I just saw it today for the first time. Got it. Um, so if you guys, if you went to your, well, I asked two questions. One, if you went to your website, do you think your websites look like you're the hero or your customer is the hero? I actually went to all your websites except for chips because he signed in late. But yeah, I think ours is pretty traditional and that zero. Yeah, uh, and ours is really traditional as well. I mean, products, services, what we can do, same. Yeah, and so so one of the things in it, and the one of the important things for me was figuring out. So so in my mind, long ago, uh, you know, the idea was, hey, we want to make sure that any potential customer that, that our message, they could feel like they were included in that, right? And, and it's counterintuitive, but when, when it potentially could speak to everybody or you haven't excluded anybody, then it doesn't speak directly to anybody. You know, and, and the opportunity to say, okay, if I could define my customer extremely tightly so that what we really want is to send a message out to people that um that if we're speaking to them and it's going to be a problem that that they are going to solve they're going to say man that's talking about me and everybody else we want to say no right because we, we want it to be obvious that we're not talking to them so that they will ignore it and go on with the rest of their lives because otherwise what we can get is a lot of hits on our website that are that are not really leads. They're people that um, you know don't want to be um, um, that they don't really want what we need, and yet um, they're they're going to click on something because some aspect. Oh, maybe that would include me, and and that's not helping us. We'd rather be much more targeted. And and the other example I use of that when somebody um, we've had this before, where somebody comes in and they're a rep group and they want to sell for us. Like, hey, what's the stuff that you sell the best? Oh, well, we can do everything. Okay, well, yeah, but what are you really good at, right? I mean, it, you know, we 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 don't want to have anybody that will say no to us. And yet, the fact is, is that okay? If, if everybody seems like a generalist, then I don't want to participate. Does that does that resonate at all with you guys? Yeah, because I mean, we don't want everybody to send us quotes. We want just the people that actually want the kind of stuff that we do, right? Because we know every quote takes energy and takes time and, and resource. And we really only want to deal with the people that want to um, want to actually buy our stuff. Uh, so I guess let's, let's take a minute. So uh, if you can think about your customers and if you were going to limit it and, and say, what are, what are two or three, criteria that would define, um, that would narrow down dramatically the number of people, you know, the, the kind of person that would be, you know, your, your target customer. Um, 
and think about what those V and because that that you know, that's an important part of the initially defining that for ourselves. Um, yeah. Do, does anybody have uh, kind of a a limiting criteria as far as your customer base that you'd like to share? Yeah, I could. Shoot. I mean, we have, you know, we focus on high volume precision machining, uh, less than two inches in diameter. Perfect. I, I even be more specific, turning. So high precision yeah. turning, less than two inches in diameter. Um, we don't specifically say on our website what high volumes are, because high volumes can be interpreted depending on the company. Some companies think 10,000 is high volume and some companies think, you know, 10 million is. And for us, as long as we're over a thousand, we're, we're pretty good. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. You. So it's, it's over a thousand for you? Generally, yeah. Yeah, and that's where I mean. So I, uh, if you're okay, Rich, I'm gonna share your. Sure. Right. So, so we, you know, this is, you know, your your website, and it starts with a virtual tour. And again, it's a obviously a, a very professionally and well done site, right? This is you guys, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it sets up a virtual tour where people can come check it out, um, and I think it'll scroll here in a second. But so the opportunity to be very clear um, and and even if you said, okay, hey, if you, you know, if you need high volume parts and in parentheses has more than a thousand pieces of turning stuff under two and a half, you know, under two inch diameter, contact us, right? I mean, it, it even doing that is going to narrow down who is actually going to, because if they come to your site and they're only buying a hundred of anything at a time, you, you kind of want them to leave, right? I mean, you don't want them to say, well, maybe if if I take three years worth, it, it makes 500, maybe they'll quote it, right? right? And so the opportunity to be to be clear, um, you know, just becomes, um, you know, that opportunity to say, okay, how do I limit the target market? And obviously all the parts on there, you know, as it keeps scrolling through, you can see, um, yeah, they're all mostly small diameter stuff and so no that's a good one anybody else john i know yours yeah well it's um in our website you ask is it uh i more or less think of our website as being more neutral than being either supporting the the hero or supporting us um i almost need a critical evaluation of somebody looking at our website from the standpoint of story brand but it, um, you know. But so I, I remember from our conversation, this specializing in fractional horsepower, 120th to two horsepower pulleys, gear drives, and thrust bearings, right? So that is a big separator for you guys. Right. Yeah. Essentially, our customer is uh, the design engineer, in particular, any industry that has small electric motors. No, and, and at least in this headline, you're saying components that help your products run more efficiently. So you're, you know, specializing in this, right? And sure. and uh, so being able to, and one of the things they talk about at StoryBrand is being able to look at that website and very quickly say, hey, what do you, you know, what problem do you solve, and how do I, how do I buy it? And you know, is it a fit for me? Is that that might is that a problem that I have? And then what do I do to take action to solve it? Chip, do you have a sense of who your customer? What limiting? Because you deal with a ton of different kinds of people. We do. This is this is a uh, we're in that territory where I think we're, we're jumping from one to the other, and we're stuck in the middle right now. Yeah. And this all happened during a pandemic, so. Yeah, that aerospace world <laughs> came crashing down pretty hard. Yeah. <coughs> but no, we, we turned out over 700,000 parts in eight months and added a manufacturing on six machines during the pandemic. 
it all went right into to some use for that. So it, it got us a name and now we've got medical device people, which has now become 75% of my business. Yeah. And it, was, it was 35 before the pandemic. So yeah, like I said, we're, we're, we're struggling right now to figure out what we want to do when we grow up. Right. Hey, Jeff, how about you? Do you have, cause you're going through distribution on some of this stuff and then direct OEM stuff to some. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're very different in the fact that, you know, we have, you know, we go to the OEMs, but we know those customers because there's there are a select few that buy our particular products, and then we use distributors. So I'm sure there's something that could be done there. But the one thing that hits my mind is our the company we bought in December of 19, Abtex, and uh, you know they definitely have a a specific niche of a very high tolerance deburring applications that doesn't nominally change the, the dimension of the part uh, at that, uh, at the cut or break or something like that. And so, so that's a, a very, very specific. And to be honest with you, I haven't been on their website in a while. I'm curious to see. Oh, here it is. You got it? Yeah, customized deburring solutions for manufacturing. The only deburring problem we haven't solved is yours. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's one, and it shows the different types of products that they work on and all that good stuff. So, so yeah, but it's very specific. Uh, again, they're a brush manufacturer, but they make the solutions <coughs> for applications. Yeah, and, and I mean, talking to Jason, uh, the you know the quantities that they're talking to is a you know is a limited a limiting factor in that you know selling a machine if you're not making what a million parts, you're probably not you're not buying a full full enchilada thing from them. Exactly, exactly. So, and a lot of it is automotive related, transmission components related. Yeah. So, um, defining defining that hero and the problem that they're wanting to solve, um, and, and it's something that we've been talking to our customers to understand what is it that, that, uh, that they buy our stuff for and, and what we've settled on, and here I can pull up our site. Um, get to the beginning. Um, here, let me share that. Right. So, um, you know, wishing they had an in-house shop. They want to have control. You know, CNC production parts. So we limit CNC production parts reliability and transparency of a captive shop without the headache or cost of managing one. Right, so that is, um, you know, obviously a lot of supply chain frustration right now, um, and wishing they had an in-house shop. Uh, and, and actually, in recent months, we've even heard a lot about, um, you know, other machine shops of, of, you know, bigger size that they can't get their the staffing and stuff that they they want, and they're outsourcing because they don't have the people. Um, so that's actually we've talked to a number of folks that they have production parts that they. They have orders they can't fulfill because uh, because that's an issue for them. So again, trying to nail down so that if they're not looking for CNC production parts, you know we don't want them to come bugging us, right? Because if 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 it's not in our wheelhouse, that's not that's not. And how we communicate that as clearly as possible so that um, so that they know, hey, this is a spot for you to come in. Um, all right, the 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 two aspects. That, um, that he talks about is establishing yourself in, as a guide. Uh, there's two main ones, and most of us do one of them pretty well and, and on all the sites we've seen, and then one uh, we don't necessarily do nearly as well, and it's, it's maybe more important. Um, the authority, so you need to have authority as a guide, and you need to have empathy. And the, the authority piece is, you know, the certifications that we've got, um, you know, the whether it's aerospace or, or any of those other certifications. Um, and then the, the empathy piece is really the part that draws them in, that we understand, you know, what's their frustration, what's the challenge that they're facing. Um, and, and just as I'm sure many of us have seen, you get in that conversation and just listening to them and, and hearing about the challenges they're facing 
engages them in a conversation in a way that, um, you know, if, if all we're doing is trying to, to give them our story and um, it, 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 it puts them to sleep, right? It's too much calorie concert, you know, consumption to get there. Whereas if, if we can empathize with where they are and then, hey, this is how we're gonna solve that problem. Um, Dave, any other thoughts on, on kind of that guide piece? Yeah, so so if you think about uh, and, and one of the one of the things that makes empathy uh, in kind of the manufacturing world difficult sometimes is because you can often have different types of buyers and different pockets of buyers that are really different. Like they can be uh, an owner or they can be a you know early career project manager. And those are two very different, uh, very different types to empathize with. But if you think about uh, any of your classic movies, uh, like uh, like Star Wars, you know, you you have in the the first series, you you have Obi Wan Kenobi coming in. Uh, he's making a big comeback uh, as of last weekend, by the way. So. <laughs> So Obi Wan comes in. He meets up with Luke, and he is able to show extreme empathy because he has all of the backstory. Luke wants to become a Jedi. Obi Wan's a great Jedi, uh, and and he knows everything that that this kid's going to go through, and that's what really feeds into the the empathy of the process. So make, bringing that over into uh, what you guys are doing is as far as thinking about how can you empathize with the role of the person uh, that is going to be purchasing from you or that is part uh, or a stakeholder in the decision um, just just takes a little bit more uh, deep thought as to how that works and what that looks like. Yeah, and John, we talked about that. You know that engineer who is trying to design a system that has one of those limited uh, torque, either clutches or or uh, motors or any of those things. You know, and you know, the challenges that they're facing trying to uh, design something that's going to fit in a tight area and get the torque where they need it. Um, and so, how we, you know, how you communicate the fact that. Um, that you understand it's challenging to fit a solution into that tight environment and it's hard to do it, you know, in a cost effective way with, you know, even small volume and, and a one off thing where everybody's going to try and make it, you know, just use a standard product and you guys are dealing with non standard products all the time. Right. And so the opportunity to sympathize to empathize with, hey, they have a challenge. They, they have a, a, they're a unique set of engineering requirements that they have to meet and they got to figure out how to do it in often a physically constrained um, in a physically constrained way right and so how you communicate that extremely simply um, and and set yourself up to be the one that can help them solve that problem because you've done it before um, many times right yeah it's that that key of, uh, of saying, my God, you have a real problem here, but you know, if we can work together, we'll get it done. Yeah, and that's the hard part uh, because you have to say it in many different ways. Yeah, and, and part of the process is, is trying different ways to say it and see what resonates, right? Because right. until you see what resonates and you know, that what we, we tend to do is two things. One, we just think that the way we said it is the way we said it. And if it's not working, then they need to figure it out. Well, that doesn't work very well, right? We have to say it one way and see if they resonate. If it doesn't, then we got to say it a different way and see if that resonates. And then when we find the one that resonates, then we just got to continue to pound that. And because if it's resonating with them and they're responding, then you can expand on it. Um, after you get them into the conversation. Um, but, you know, we, we tend to, and, and I know I've seen this in, in our zone where we get, you know, we get one priority, right, what's the next new thing we're gonna come out? What's the next new way we're gonna do this? And, you know, finding the ones that actually work um, and, and continuing to, to use that language in, in the other aspects of what we're doing 
um, has been extremely helpful to us. I know that. Um, so the um, the one aspect of the problem, and, and Dave, if you want to run through kind of the three levels of the problem, that would be, I think, helpful. Um, because you know, there there is, and this is, again, the, those three, the hero, the, the problem, and the guide are the, the, the real, the foundation of this thing. Um, and the problem, uh, you know, there's, there, and I can pull up that. Yeah, pull, pull, pull up the, uh, this one. So this is the problem, and I, I think I can, maybe I can zoom in. Yes. No, I didn't do that. Yeah. So so the uh, the problem exhibits itself on the external, internal, and philosophical dimension. Uh, so so the external problem and um, and and the one that uh, one example that I really liked that really brings it home for you is. Uh, if you have a backed up sewer system. So the external problem is you have a backed up sewer system. The internal problem is you have people coming over and you don't want to have a house that stinks. Uh, that's, that's a very different, like, like the way it, it comes in uh, internally is different uh, than the way is, it is expressed just on, on the outward measure. And then the philosophical problem is you know, it gets in, into the idea that people will think badly of you if you have a house that stinks, if you don't take care of this problem. Uh, and the, the, the way that the philosophical problem often uh, is stated is uh, something like you deserve to have, uh, have a good running septic system. Uh, and, and that deserve language uh, can, can really bring it elevated above what that external problem uh, feels like and, and take it to the next level. Uh, the other element that is here is, is the element of the, the villain. And depending on, uh, depending on the, the situation, there may or may not be a villain or some, some issue that you really go after. Uh, often within manufacturing, I'd probably not use, you know, villainize whatever. Uh, un unless you have a really good one, but the problem always exists on that external, internal, and philosophical. And Andy, uh, you you had a you had a good philosophical uh, punchline one too. But I did. I'm, now I'm struggling. It, 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 <laughs> it, it was in it was in the uh, blog on the philosophical. Yeah, the um, one here. I have. Uh, let's see here. So. I, we're going to send this to you guys afterwards. So this was uh, the summary of the blog post that we did. Um, and it has um, the different action steps and, and a description around each of these um, and, and defining the external problem. Uh, and I pulled stuff straight from our website, the internal problem um, and examples there in the philosophical problem. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, we believe it's just plain wrong that manufacturing customers can't have vendors that make them feel like they're an extension of their own companies. Um, you know, we engage deeply with our customers and fully understand the challenges they're facing in their products we're partnering on. Right, and this is, I mean, it's a bit long-winded in some of it, and yet it's also, um, you know, it's a statement of, of what we believe, and it's kind of that philosophy that, hey, we deserve to get decent service. And, and you know, I, I often liken it to, uh, you know, you're going to a restaurant and if you go to a restaurant and you get bad service, you're not going to go back and you're certainly not going to say good things about it to your friends. And, and, and I think in the manufacturing and industrial space, um, you know, we kind of have a lot of historic vendors and, and we just don't know that there's anything out there and it takes work and energy to go out and, and do it. And unless somebody hits us with a message that, that speaks to the problem that we're dealing with, at the time that we're dealing with it and it, it resonates with us, we're not going to make a change, right? It's, it's more painful to change to an unknown than it is to stick with even the challenges that we're facing, right? There's always problems and I'd rather stick with the ones that, that I have. Um, so, um, so that going through those levels of the, of the, the different levels so the external is, is I, I got to buy some parts. I got to get, you know, I got to fill this bill of material. 
the internal is really how does that make me feel having that problem and whether it's again for us there's two main folks that we're targeting which either the, the either a um, an owner or operator of a, of a manufacturing business or kind of that that younger professional in those larger organizations um, and and for the younger professional larger organizations they don't want to look bad to their boss they want to ascend the the hierarchy of their company because they have a career that they're trying to build for the owner of the business you know it's the they need the stuff they're frustrated they have to deal with the vendors and the quality issues and all these other things and it shouldn't be that hard, right? That's that philosophical sense that, look, I run a good company. Why can't these other people figure it out? And so if you speak into that, to the nature of the person that you're trying to do and you qualify them, in our case, it's with CNC production parts is kind of our big you know, thing for, for John. It's fractional horsepower motors. You know, everybody have in there for, for Rich, it's you know, under two inches and in high volume turning. You know, as you as you can put those qualifiers and then you can speak the language of somebody who's trying to solve a problem, you can break through that clutter of that marketing message as long as it's simple and clear. Um, so um, there's a bunch of elements in this. And again, we set it for an hour and a half. And I, I mean, I want to be mindful of your time. I know um, Rich had put in, uh, and I think this is something that uh, all of us, and, and I went on to everybody's, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn social media stuff. And uh, I know that's what been one uh, mysterious area, certainly for me that I'm not, I don't go on Facebook a lot, only when I go hiking. Um, but uh, on LinkedIn seems to be the area where we're going to spend more of our time trying to, to find, uh, you know, kind of B2B stuff. Uh, we've done a lot on Facebook and Instagram with our tactical side stuff. But um, the, the, the biggest thing that I found, and Don uh, Miller did a, a, a webinar on that, that that I attended and we've tried to use in, and, and it comes back to this, the, the thing that hooks us in a story, right? And if you go to any movie, any book you've ever read that's fiction that you've enjoyed, and frankly, even a bunch of nonfiction, this character in the story encounters a problem and the problem is the hook it opens a story loop in our head that helps us think hey how are they going to solve that problem right so star wars luke's aunt and uncle are killed within the first two minutes of the movie and now he's on the run from the bad guys um i mean almost every i mean jason Bourne movie right instantly he's you know he doesn't know who he is and there's people after him because of something in the past right and how are we going to resolve that problem and on a post, the opportunity to start a, any kind of social post with what's the problem that they're facing um, and, and lead with the problem that becomes the hook and then talk about how that problem can get solved and then give them a call to action at the end. And, and that reminds me because the other thing we did want to talk about, Dave, is, is the calls to action and, and going through the websites um, you know, Don talks about you, you have to be extremely clear in what your call to action. Is it schedule an appointment? Is it send a, a drawing or request for quote? What is it that thing? Get more information is, is not a strong call to action. It's very passive. Um, and so, you know, having obviously a plan of how they're going to interact with you to be able to solve that problem. Again, as Dave talked about the we don't want them to have to spend a lot of calories to figure out how to work with us. Um, and so being able to be extremely clear once they, hey, this is a problem, uh, having a call to action um, is an important part of it. And then as we've been working to build and like this blog series that I did, you know, I did a bunch of things that obviously the content is intended to be helpful to people to be able to solve some challenges in manufacturing. Um, and then we put it as a PDF. So that then that can be something that um, they they've spent some time on our website. They may have interest in our stuff, but they're not ready to send us a quote yet. They're still checking stuff out. But then, hey, here's a thing of value that you could download um, in exchange for your email address, so that then we can continue to send helpful content. Similarly, on your fate and your social media, you know, you want it to be helpful content to them. What problem are we solving? And as you know, you kind of build that formula of, hey, what's the problem that gets them in? Then Here's how we deal with that problem. And here's 
how you can uh, you can get some help solving that problem for yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. just just uh, taking a step back. So uh, calls to action on the website. Uh, I want you to think of two different varieties. There is the direct call to action and a transitional call to action. So a direct call to action and, and in particular in, uh, within manufacturing, there's, there is a long dance that has to take place from that initial conversation to a quote getting sent, signed, and a PO being made right? So, so there's, there's a distance that has to happen there. And in order, for a, uh, in order for a buyer to be comfortable enough with a particular manufacturer to go ahead and, you know, sign on the dotted line and start sending POs and money, um, there is a pretty good chance that, that they're not going to be ready for the third, third date stuff on the first date. So one of the things that you can have is a transitional call to action, which provides value to them. Uh, and, you know, thinking about a, a couple of years. So, so basically uh, a download that, that shows all of the different applications that your particular services can build into, or, you know, top five ways, you know, that this, this particular type of motor works within an application, right? So thinking about how can I provide that, that value for someone who's not already ready to make a direct, uh, take a direct action, they can get a supplemental action, which will help them understand you more, will help them understand how you can address the problem, and help them have a deeper understanding of the problem. Because in particular with uh, some of the, the earlier career folks that you might be talking to within, uh, within the, the buying process, they don't know what they don't know. So if you can provide information that explains to them some of the things that they might be missing in the picture, you are then going to be an expert that they can rely on and go to and when they have the problem that your, uh, your specific application fills, they know to go to you. And you can use that uh, as a email address catcher and, uh, and begin to market to them directly over the course of time, which will allow them to see your brand, see your solutions, see how you're addressing problems over a longer period of time, which will bring them, you know, I, I would guess that the, the sales cycle for, uh, for a, a lot of you is probably counted in years, not weeks. So having that ability to continually get in front of people uh, in a somewhat passive way through email and email automation, things like that can really make it a lot simpler for them to know, oh, who, who is that company that only does the two inch that does the two inch diameter, you know, I know who that is because they showed up in my inbox. The, the other thing that it, it also has forced us to see, Hey, what do we want that process to look like? And, and Jeff, it was funny. I just, I pulled your website back up to see what your call to action is. Um, when folks go to your website, what, what do you want them to do? So the Malish website or the Abtex website? The, Ma the Malish website. I should go to Abtex. No. Hmm. Um, and, and I can't find a call to action other than reading the case study and reading more, reading the reviews. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a call to action on our website. I don't think it's. I don't think it's set up in that fashion. Yeah, and, and even on the there's a contact us at the bottom of the Abtex site here. I can. Right, so the top of the Abtex site, you know, cussing to burring, and and you get down, and there's a bunch of information. Stay current. You can keep current with their appearances and the trade shows and stuff. And then you get down here is the the only way to connect is to get in touch with us. Correct. Right, and and so you know, Don would would look at this website and say, okay, that's that's like going into a store and you can't find the cash register. Yeah. 
And so having a big button here that says, you know, you know. Well, there is the link right there, but it's not very yeah. visible. Right, it's not very visible, right? Yeah. That was excellent. You know, so, but so having, having it very clear, hey, you know, we're solving the brewing problems, you know, what's, what's that problem that they're trying to do? And then, uh, as Dave said, you know, having, um, you know, information that could be, hey, you want to download the five ways to, to, to most easily or get the best out of your, your um, you know, your brushes or whatever, you know, I mean, any of the stuff that, again, it's that role as a guide that, that we play that, is saying, assuming that they're coming in, they have this problem and they don't know what the best way to do it is. And so we wanna be in a spot to provide them, um, to provide them that opportunity. Um, John, this is yours. Um, you know, and there's get more information uh, on each of these. Um, and here you have, uh, you know, there's a let's, let's talk. Um, I'm assuming that if I click here, it's gonna take us to, a catalog, right? Yes, PDF catalog. And then browse our free <clears throat> resources, right? And so, I, I mean, uh, having gone to this link, not today, but, you know, you have a bunch of stuff that is <coughs> essentially um, could be used as a transitional call to action based on specific problems that they're having and making it very clear so they don't have to dig super deep to be able to understand, hey, what is this, you know, what's the problem that we're solving and and uh, how do we how do we get it? You know, request a quote. Again, this is and you know very standard having you know the company logo at the top. You scroll across. Here's the button to do it. Tip and you have another button here. Um, oh, you know, so Andy, yeah, go up to the top real quick. Um, just wanted to point something out. So uh, one one thing that's that this is the one that starts on. Just to be clear, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what one thing to think about for everybody to think about is uh, just a helpful hint when it comes to understanding uh, kind of the psychology behind what should be on a, uh, a landing page of a, a website, a main page of the website, is when people interact with websites, they're automatically, uh, they, they automatically go in and they're making a visual Z pattern so it goes across, so it starts at, at the logo, the, the, the top left, straight across to what should be uh, and what Don calls the cash register, uh, which is the top right, which needs to be a very clear direct call to action. And then it, it cuts back down a, a, across where you want to have an, another direct call to action and or a uh, transitional call to action and then uh, and then it, it it reads across again. So so just visualize whenever whenever you're looking at a website and you'll you'll notice <coughs> it now uh, you'll you'll see that that the automatic scan is uh, is that Zorro pattern. Yeah. Now, and having having those calls to action and cash register. Yes, you need to have the cash register in that top corner. Yeah, and, and thinking about how they can work with us, and it, I'm sure it's different from all of us. And and I'd say probably Rich, yours and mine may be the two closest, where um, you know they're going to send us some sort of drawing, and we're going to review it, and then uh, look to get them you know some sort of a quote, right? I mean, ours is uh, is get a quote, yours is request a quote, same same kind of um, process, but thinking through, hey, what is it that we want them to do and how can we make it as easy as possible for them to be able to solve the problem that they're, they're looking to solve? Um, and, and again, I think just the, one of the biggest epiphanies of the whole thing for me was is that we need to be in that position of a guide because they don't know what the solution is um, by and large of, of what they're trying to do and how do we help them solve that. Um, all right. Um, you know, that raises such an interesting question of really what are the best hooks out there for call to actions? I mean, each industry has its own unique hook. Um, I've sort of resisted a little bit of the throwing out request a quote right in the beginning only because they don't know what they're going to request a quote for. 
but uh, but I like the idea that up in that upper right hand corner, yeah, that's important real estate. So what 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 are the ideal things to have there? When, and so, Dave, you can you can answer that question. I think the you know something very direct and specific for you, John. Um, you know, based on our conversations before, you know, you're not typically quoting an off-the-shelf thing. You're not typically interacting in your in your the, the problems that you're trying to help your customer solve. They don't. They're not just buying something out of your catalog. They need you to engineer something, and and so. Um, they don't necessarily have a drawing the same way as, I mean, I'm going to say 90 plus percent of the people that are reaching out to us, they have a drawing they need to get quoted, right? And, and my guess is Rich is the same as similar for you, where most of the time they have a drawing and they want you to quote it. Um, and, and, you know, John, it feels like yours is much more where you have to help them engineer the solution. Um, and so, you know, the language for that could be, you know, schedule a, uh, a consultation. It could be, um, you know, fill out a, a profile, a problem, you know, uh, your engineering challenge profile, and it could have a list of questions that help them. Um, that that in today's day and age, and even the request to quote, right? We get a bunch of people who submit that um, because they do have a drawing, but we've started on on our tactical stuff where we're. It's, it's more straightforward, but putting a profile where there's a series of questions that they have to fill out because especially this younger generation, they don't want to talk to people, right? They want to do it all in a series of clicks. And so if you give them some clicks that have questions around the problem that they're trying to solve, um, they'll fill out a profile sheet for you to be able to um, get help. And, and I mean, the irony is, is if you went through the, the story brand marketing assessment that came up on the link when you signed up, that's a similar zone, right? Where here's a list of stuff that, that you may or may not need help with, and here's where you are. And some of them, you're doing it extremely well. Some of them, you need help. And, and so to be able to use a profile like that um, to help narrow down what are they trying to solve, John, you have like four major things that um, you know, four major areas, right, that they're trying to, um, here, let's go back to that, right, so you have pulleys, bearings, right angle gearboxes, and multi-rib pulleys, right? right, so you have those four things, and so, um, you know, if you developed a means of, you know, maybe there were four or five questions as if it was a pulley, a bearing, or a right angle gearbox, or, you know, profile, give us a profile of your problem, you can get them to engage that they have, hey, have a problem and you need a pulley solution, fill out this profile and, and have it be, it's a transitional call to action in which they need to submit some information to you, but it doesn't feel like, you know, they, they haven't sent you thousands of dollars yet, they're getting some help. And, and to be able to click through um, a profile and and it, it here's five or six questions that you know they may or may not know the answer to but then giving them um, a place to write in some stuff additionally if they have extra info a place to download a, you know to, to upload a file to you um, and make those optional um, you want to make it as straightforward as possible for them to take a next step to recognizing that potentially you could solve their problem if you if you isolate it hey you're using this kind of a you know, a half to the half horsepower to two horsepower motor in your in your thing. Here's you know, you give those criteria, then they can fill out a profile that would then give yeah. them a reason to interact. Yeah. No, I, I like the concept. I like it very very much. Is that an easy avenue for somebody to take? I mean, we or are you know, so many people come onto a website and they'll be damned if they're going to let you know what their issues are. Well, <laughs> certainly. Right. I mean, that's because right. we all know now, as soon as I click something or as soon as I give my email address, right, it's got to be worth enough for me to do that because I know I'm going to get in their marketing engine. Right. right. So so we're resistant to that. You know, Don would estimate between 15 and 20 bucks. you got to give them at least 15 to 20 bucks of value because they know later they're going to have to unsubscribe if, if you are giving them what they want. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's that 
that start to an exchange. Now, the other thing in here, I'll. No, I'll so one, one, one quick thing on, on that point. Is <coughs> the more clearly you define who you are and the problem you, you solve, the more easily they connect with that and the more likely they are uh, to provide that type of information. So, so, so that is uh, an element of that. So it's that whole bonding element that has to take place within three seconds. And we're not, <laughs> our con contribution to that bonding is just what we put on our website to make them feel warm and comfortable. It, exactly. I'll give you 10, but uh, 10 seconds, but that's it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the other thing, and this is true on most of our sites, right, is you know, we, we do that Z pattern and all this stuff in here, right, is, it's, it's another distracting, right? So um, the opportunity to keep the top as clear as possible and clean as possible, um, you know, is, is helpful to, again, reduce the amount of calories that it takes for them to get there. Um, you know, the, the, you know, we see the logo, we want to know who it is. We scroll across to see, hey, this is the cash register. And then in here, again, this is nice and clean. Um, I mean, you know, it, it is uh, speaking to, uh, you know, kind of the, hey, we're the hero of the story. But I mean, it, you know, it, again, it's, it's, I understand the message, but the challenge is all this stuff. And, and what Don recommends is taking anything that's going to distract from seeing that problem and knowing it's going to solve this all goes down in the junk drawer. If they want to find it, they'll find it. And, and so you put it all at the bottom, which you have it all down here anyway, then, you know, if somebody wants to go dig in and, and having all these pages in there will allow that the content and the search engine optimization stuff will all work, but not having it distract for that first three seconds when they're looking, you know, having it be as clean as possible with just, hey, here's the problem that we're looking at, um, you know, is a helpful opportunity to not, again, cause them to take more than an extra second or two to do that. Um, Hey, Royce, you jumped in kind of in the middle and I didn't want to, we were on a roll there, but um, if you could share just quickly kind of what your business is and. and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks. Oh. Thanks for uh, letting me in late. I'm sorry I missed uh, the start there. I don't, uh, I'm a little bit different than, than uh, a lot on the call here in that I don't actually have my own shop anymore. I, I used to run a, a sheet metal fab shop. Uh, for 10 years and I kind of grew up in manufacturing. So um, my, my focus now though is on, you know, I'd, I'd be interested to talk to you and, uh, and David afterwards, you know, I don't want to um, take, you know, distract from kind of the main point of this, uh, but, but essentially kind of helping business owners like I used to be uh, to do similar sorts of things, but a bit, a bit of a different angle uh, to it. But I really love the, that seeing this kind of storytelling and like the ideal client avatar stuff that you guys are going over um, really resonates with the last kind of piece in, in you know what I've been doing on on the other end. But uh, yeah, that's a, a much more you know background. But I don't want to take away yeah. from what you, what you're going with here. Okay, no, I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Um, so in the follow up to this, so we'll we are recording, and I missed the beginning too, Royce. Um, but so. Uh, you know, I, we will send the recording. Um, the, there's a couple uh, documents that we've got. Um, here, let me share this again. So, um, the, so the story brand brand script, I'll send you the email address for the one I showed you that also has some of the videos. And then this is just a template that you can fill out that has, um, you know, the guidepost to it. Um, the, this, Kind of summary of the blog and i don't know how many this is a, a long document that is the is kind of a compilation of all the blog posts that i did at the very end of it um so, is, so it's uh it's it's 20 pages in total uh but what was it three years in the making andy <laughs> yeah at least and and so then there is a fill outable pdf at the bottom and i'll send this as a separate where um you know going through uh the exercise of filling in uh, you know, the answers to the questions, again, it's, it's, uh, it is a, I think it's, you know, we, we kind of redo this, um, you know, frankly, every couple of months on different aspects of it as, as we're looking to see what lead generators we can do, 
uh, redefining success based on, on the conversations we have with our customers. So we'll give you that PDF also. Uh, so both of those, uh, the recording of today, and then this uh, brand script template um, I filled out. So this is you know the one that I just pulled straight from the blogs that I did and plugged in all this stuff. And, and it's, I think, only four or five, not six pages, I guess. Um, but so I won't, I don't need to send that one necessarily because that's into the blog. Um, and then, uh, I'll give you the link to this so that you've got it. Um, and, uh, with that, unless there's any, any other specific. One other, one other thing real quick, Andy. Uh, so many of you already, uh, got the marketing report and did that. Uh, and Dave just totally, this happened once at the beginning. Um, oh, and Kelly's joining us late. Dave will come back in a moment. Something happened to his computer earlier and it just dropped off like that. Um, so he will come back in. Hey, Kelly. Hello, I'm sorry, I got stuck in another meeting. <laughs> no worries at all, no worries at all. We're just actually wrapping up and, and uh, if you hang on for a little, a couple extra minutes after we close here in a couple minutes, then uh, we can chat a bit. Um, Dave just had a computer issue and he got totally bounced um, as he was uh, as he was summarizing. There he is. Um, we'll let him back in. There he is. The bounce again. So make sure you unmute yourself so we can hear you. Um, and then you can probably share your screen again. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. I only spend most of my time on Zoom, and today it's giving me a heart headache. Uh, so anyway, the, the the marketing report, if you haven't done one, that that is available uh, for you. Um, so just click that link, and and it's it's a pretty uh, pretty nice guide to get something nice and simple uh, to give you some specific things that that you can go after in, in, as far as goals. Uh, and obviously, if if you need any help with with uh, any of that, uh, where uh, Goldpost Group specializes in story branding for uh, manufacturing manufacturing companies. So we're we're happy to help with that uh, if you need it. Awesome. All right. Anybody got any other thoughts, questions? I do appreciate y'all making the time to be with us, and uh, uh, you know, it's you know, I know most of you for at least a little while and and you know it's something that you know has changed the way I think about how we do our business I I will acknowledge I didn't go to business school and I got out of the Navy and I didn't know what marketing was ran a company for 20 years without knowing it and then read building a story brand and, and now I spend more of my time doing marketing than anything else and and you know our business has gone up and down based on on how good our our sales team is um, and, and being able to put a foundation of marketing resources um, in place uh, makes it a lot easier on that. Uh, and, and the opportunity as a small business, as many of us are, uh, to stabilize the sales side by having a solid marketing where people are coming to seek us to, to get their problems solved is, is a huge uh, lift off of uh, weight off our shoulders. So um, you know, I, I wanted to share it and, and uh, excited to to be able to be to be helpful if we can, and, and hopefully the information has been worthwhile to you. All right, any other thoughts or questions? No. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for the time, Kelly. If you want to hang on for just a second, then uh, we can we can have a brief chat. Um, I know you got you got tied up before, so thanks everybody. All right, thank thanks you so much, guys. Thanks, thanks guys. Have a good one.